Hello, if you don't know me, my name is Mr Baker and I teach A-level chemistry here at Gosford Hill School. I've taught A-level here at Gosford for over 10 years across all parts of the specification. In addition to that, I'm also the current head of Year 8 and I've also been a house leader. A-level chemistry builds on a lot of the knowledge that you would have covered at GCSE level, bringing in new ideas and concepts to both complement and build upon your understanding. It can be split, split broadly into three main areas, physical chemistry, inorganic chemistry and organic chemistry. In physical chemistry, we will look at topics such as atomic structure, structure and bonding in molecules, as well as explore ideas such as rate kinetics, energetics and equilibria. Inorganic chemistry focuses on those elements of the periodic table that are not the element carbon. We will consider the reactions of uh, groups such as the alkali metals and the halogens, looking to use our knowledge from physical chemistry to explain the trends and obs observations that we make. Organic chemistry is the opposite of inorganic chemistry. It is solely about compounds that contain the element carbon. Here we will study groups of compounds such as the alkanes and alkanes, the alkenes, which you will be familiar with, alcohols and halogen alkanes, aiming to understand the reactions they are involved in and how these can be used to produce useful chemicals for the modern world. We will also consider analytical techniques such as infrared spectroscopy and mass spectrometry that can be used to analyse these molecules. Alongside these three branches of chemistry, a large emphasis will be placed upon approaching chemistry in a quantitative manner, particularly by using the idea of the mole to calculate amounts of reactants and products in different reactions. It is therefore a requirement of the course to have achieved at least a grade six in GCSE mathematics to be able to cope with the mathematical demands on the course. In year 13, we will expand upon much of the content outlined just now, as well as introducing other fundamental ideas such as redox and entropy that enable us to understand and not, not only what is happening, but why. A-level chemistry is a subject that is highly valued by many universities and courses. Chemistry looks to explain the molecular basis behind how our world works, so it has applications to, deg to degrees and careers from astronomy to zoology. In particular, it is very useful, if not mandatory, for courses such as chemistry, chemical engineering, biochemistry and biomedical sciences, including medicine. From here, there are a wide range of careers available, including ones you may not have thought about, such as law, for example, pharmaceuticals companies need lawyers with an in-depth understanding of molecules used in novel drugs or treatments, or finance. Banks will need to understand about investing in companies that could provide greener solutions to the problems of global warming and climate change. Chemistry has always been a popular subject here at Gosford Hill. We have almost 25% of our current year 13 taking the subject this year, and it has achieved excellent results. We have consistently had students who have studied chemistry be offered places at Oxbridge, as well as other students who have gone on to study veterinary science and dentistry. In 2019, chemistry had some of the top results in the school, with 55% of students achieving either an A or an A-star grade. To study A-level chemistry, you will need at least a grade 6 in GCSE chemistry, or a grade 6-6 six, six in GCSE combined science. As previously mentioned, you will also need a grade 6 at GCSE mathematics. If you are a student who's taking combined science at the moment, don't worry, you will not be disadvantaged in any way from studying the course at A-level. The A-level course is assessed with three papers at the end of year 13. Two of these papers are one hour and 45 minutes long, with the third synoptic paper being two and a half hours long. Alongside this, your practical work is continually assessed over the course towards an overall pass or fail grade for the practical component. You will be expected to know 12 practical techniques and display competency in these techniques over 16 core practicals, which are built into the course, with plenty of opportunity for students to practice and develop your skills along the way. If you are interested and have any further questions, then you can contact me at the school. I look forward to seeing you in September. Thank you very much.